Hello everybody and welcome to citycabinets.com. I'm Chad Barker. I'm going to show you today how to assemble a one drawer, one door base cabinet. Today we have all of our items assembled and ready to go. So our doors, our drawer fronts, we're going right here. Place over to the side, we have our rubber wood drawer box. Everything's dovetailed. This comes to you fully assembled already. Obviously I'm going to put this thing to the side and we'll get to that in a minute. Over here we have all of our hardware. Now I have it all set out in front of us so we can see exactly what we're getting into here. We have our drawer slides, drawer, got, uh, drawer locking devices. We have our hinge plates, hinges. Uh, we have our posi drive bit, compromat screws. Here we have our drawer front mounting screws, our hinge screws, five millimeter system screws. That's gonna attach your drawer slide to the interior of the drawer of the cabinet case. And then just regular uh, adjustable shelf uh, pins right here. So pretty simple. I'm gonna pull them all to the side again as we get into assembly, trying to keep it all sort of organized. Here we have our cabinet case and all the parts included. Off to the side again. And we have our cabinet back. Now, put this, put, putting this thing off to the side, I'm gonna grab this in one minute. We're gonna start with the UEL and UER. That's unfinished in left and unfinished in right. Okay, we're gonna put them back to back. And I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. We'll get that in a minute. So that's the last thing we're gonna be doing. So back to back. I'm gonna have them all set up. Now you can do the hardware later. I prefer to put the hardware on before we actually get into it because it's a lot harder to reach into the cabinet and attach the drawer slides. Today, all you're gonna need is an electric driver. So an electric uh, drill like you see here, a regular drill bit or a regular uh, Phillips bit. That should be included with all your stuff. And then we're gonna need our posi drive bit which comes with it. Other than that, you don't really need anything else to assemble these cabinets, it's pretty easy. Open up our drawer guide, see what we have here. Remove the tape. And you know, the front of the drawer slide is going to be toward the front of the cabinet. It sits back about an eighth of an inch. All right, there we go. So you guys can see it. I'm going to be reaching over. So I have my standard driver. I prefer an impact driver. Uh, if you're going to be assembling this stuff, impact drivers are probably the best way to do it. It's going to be the fastest and easiest way to put everything in. So we need a few of these system screws. Typically it's three on each drawer slide. It depends on how deep the drawer slide is. What you're gonna do is you're gonna find the very front of the drawer slide. That's the front here. Obviously you can see that it opens this way. And you're gonna do it with this hole. So you're probably upside down from here, but it's the lower row, it's the first set, and it's the farthest one to my left. So going through here, let's take the system screw and let's attach just the first. Then gonna open the drawer slide all the way up. You're gonna then match up the holes. You have one in the rear and one in the middle. Prefer to do the one in the back first. Make sure it's lined up. And don't over tighten. If you strip them out, it's not the end of the world, but always better to under tighten. Nice and snug. Okay, that's it. That drawer slide is installed. Let's go over to the next one. Same idea here. Five millimeter system screw. Again, from looking at it from my point of view, we're on the lower row the first set farthest to my right. Just a little bit, don't go over tighten. You can strip them out, but this, this is plywood. You can, go, you can go in and out screws a few times before it strips out the plywood. It's not like particle board core where you have to worry about that. All right, drawer slides are now installed. Next thing we're gonna do is add on some hinge plates. You can do the hinge plates later. Again, I prefer not to. While you have the cabinet sides face down, it's easier to get a better angle with your drill if you put them on this way. Now notice we have an arrow. It's like a little triangle at the front. That's gonna be pointing toward the front of the cabinet. The front of your cabinet has edge banding on it, so we're gonna attach these as you see here. Hold them down with one hand, use your bit, attach with the other. Again, just nice and snug. need to put the hinges on. We'll put those on the door itself here in a minute. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we have those pieces done. I'm going to start off with by pulling this piece off to the side and we're going to get into the actual assembly of the cabinet case, which is the most fun part. So I'm going to look for the deck. Now you have stretchers that are up here. Again, as you look at this cabinet, stretchers are up top. That's a drawer stretcher, top stretcher, top stretcher, 
Nailers go in the back, and then you have a deck. So look for your deck. We'll do that real quick. So these packages here, the stretchers and nailers. Here's your deck, it's got a dado in the bottom of it, and that's gonna hold the back in there. So again, pick it like this. I'm gonna do it from this side so you can kind of see. So you probably wanna be over here to take a look at this method. You can kind of lean them together. And notice that they're already kind of, they're, all the holes are already pre-drilled. They're gonna align very nicely. So we're gonna take some Compromat screws. We're gonna open up this bin for this package of Compromat. And we're gonna get a few. Again, we're gonna take our bit. And we're gonna swap that out for the Posi Drive bit. We don't need this other bit uh, until we get into the doors and drawer boxes. Again, Posi Drive bit right here. I'm gonna insert that into the drill. I'm gonna take some Compromat screws. We're gonna line it up the best we can. I prefer to use it by hand first. Just make sure it's all aligned right there. Come back in. And, and this has to actually be right on. So if you, if you see how I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, if you, if you try to come in at an angle like this, it's gonna strip the top of that head out. You need to be dead on with it. And it does that on purpose. If it, if it over tightens, it'll actually strip the top of the screw head out. So. When you go, go flush. Make it exactly flush. On these Compromat screws, there's little nibs. And on those little nibs, like little, they're like, they're technically called nibs, but what they do is they actually push the veneer of the plywood out of the way uh, so that it can countersink or self countersink itself. So you don't need to go through and try to countersink everything. Cover the holes by looking inside and do the next one right here in the middle. Don't do this one over here because you could miss it and that could damage the veneer if you miss. Now it should pull right into the hole. Just make sure you're not inside or outside. They're just about flush. Again, go down on the bottom. Okay, came out really good. Moving on to the next one. And grab your other side. Doesn't matter which state way you do this, you can do it any way you want. I prefer to do whatever, whatever's the easiest. Okay, this is a fresh brand new cabinet. We're gonna go through here, a couple twists. Align the faces as you need to. Notice how it, did, it wanted to strip out a little bit until I got it kind of seated in there. Now it's really nice and uh, dialed in. Perfect. Now these joints are really, really flush. They're, they're nice and, and flush at the top. If it comes out and say the deck is set forward or back, you can loosen it up and then, re, and then put it back in a few times and that'll loosen up the piece. Worst case scenario, if it's out more than a sixteenth of an inch, you can simply use a mallet or you can use the palm of your hand. It's got a little bit of give up and down uh, and left and right. Well, not really left and right. You got the screws holding it in. So I'm flush here. This came out really nice. So I'm not going to adjust because I don't need to. And technically, when you're assembling these, you don't have to have them perfect. If they're off by a 32nd or a 64th of an inch, it's not a big deal. Okay. Moving on. Looking inside, making sure the holes are somewhat lined up. That's the reason I'm doing the middle one instead of the, the end. <laughs> know the plywood here nice and dense real thick great screw holding strength okay I'm gonna put this thing up and now you might be thinking hey let's just go through and assemble the rest of it we have a fully captured back on the city cabinets so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna insert the back now there's a face and then there's a back this is the a, a raw side and then this is gonna be the clear coat finish side let's go through insert this guy into the back Dado and get it in there as much as we can. Now it's onto the face right there, so make sure it's all the way into that dado groove, otherwise it'll knock the stretcher off. Looking good. We're gonna take the top stretcher rear. So that's this guy. It's the only top stretcher with a dado actually drilled into it. Take that. I prefer to just put it up there, as you see here. Doesn't have to be perfectly aligned. We're not there yet. Take a couple of compromat screws and we're going to attach, get it about as flush as you can. Might be kind of hard to see because it's kind of high up, but I have it all flushed up. Kind of see right there. You need to be within about a sixteenth of an inch or so. There we go. Next screw, go over here, make sure it's about, about flush at the top. 
Again, if that's up or down, you can loosen those up. This one came out pretty good, but what I'm saying by loosening it, just loosen it up a little bit like this. Move it around a little bit. You can kind of push it to where you want it to go. You can go up or you can go down. Just be strong with it. Ultimately, it's pretty, we do CNC drilling for all of our stuff, but some of the smaller and bigger parts can wiggle a little bit. We can have a little bit of variation uh, when we go to machine these parts so they can kind of be off just a little bit, but mallets are good friends. Or use the palm of your hand, it's not that big of a deal. All right, looking pretty good. I don't know why they abandoned the back edge of this. Before. All right, prototype cap. Here we go. Nailer going go here. Again, another nailer up top. This is, make sure you read it because this one has a piece of edge banding on the face of it. That's going to go on the front. So in this case, what I like to do, put the cabinet face down. That allows us to get some pressure into the cabinet case. And again, we're going to attach. Again, going up to the side. You can get a little bit quicker on here. Once you turn the nailers, you can get your, that's the top stretcher. Here's another nailer. Again, it says right there what the name of the part is on the tag. So don't remove the tags. I typically try to leave them on. I leave them facing out back. That way you can kind of see that they're, you know, what cabinet number it is. If there's an issue or if a part needs to be replaced or anything. Like there we go. And those nailers are really going to keep that back in place. Let's see here. I saw how my, my, my drill came off just a little bit and started spinning on the head, and that was due to the fact that I wasn't perfectly perpendicular uh, to the actual part. Last part we're gonna do is the stretchers here. Pretty easy. Take this one. I always try to keep the labels up again as you're putting stuff together. It's a little bit easier to uh, see the cabinet numbers when the label's uh, still still up. Plus that'll be hidden by the countertop when you're all done. Get it more or less flush until the holes kind of get into each other. If you get worried about it and it's a little wobbly like this, this is not the best angle. There we go. Nice and straight. While we're already here, I'm going to put this one on as well. Again, I'm going to do, we have a edge banded front edge. I'm going to do label up. It doesn't matter really, you can go up or down, but I prefer them up because I want to be able to see it when I'm, when I'm installing the cabinet. I saw how it pulled it back to right where it needs to be. Again, over here. Last side. We've got four screws out. Switch hands, make sure we're okay. Too far deep on that one. So just need to go flush to the face. Don't need to go all the way in. These newer impact drivers, especially the brand new ones, they can actually go in a little further than you might anticipate. And the whole point there. Just perfect. I mean, the, the impact driver is nice because you can kind of let off on the trigger and it'll actually slow down a little bit. Perfect. Got it. All right, now the cabinet case is fully assembled. The only thing we need to do that's left over is the F toe. That's it. That means the front toe kick. That's this guy right here. Again, I'm going to do label out and I'll put the cabinet on its back. This is a better angle on Madison Kevin. Jeez. All right. Nice three quarters of an inch thick plywood. Very dense. Got a lot of heft to it. Very stable. Then going into here. Notice how it pulled it right where it needs to be. See what I did here. Notice how it stayed up a little bit there because I didn't push it in. I'm going to back that out. I'm going to pull it down. 
Notice how it's now flush, but before it wasn't. I'm gonna to try to do that again here. I'm gonna show you what sloppy assembly looks like. And then I'm gonna show you what good assembly looks like. So for example, let's say I hold it up like this and I get and I drill it in. And I pulled it down. So let's say it's up. You can kind of give some pressure. Right now it's technically down a little bit. So let's say I want to get it up a little bit to get it perfectly flush. And again, they don't have to be perfectly flush. This is perfectly acceptable for cabinet installation. I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to hold it up a little higher. Now I'm perfectly flush. What it does is it actually drills out a little bit of that hole and it gives it a little bit of movement, a little bit of space to, uh, to maneuver uh, that part up or down in elevation. Again, nice and flush. Try not to leave your screw head sticking out. That will add dimension to your cabinet and that's not good. Uh, by the time you get done with your run, you'll be like, if you did it on like 10 cabinets and you're 16th out on each side, and you can do the math, it's about three quarters of an inch, so that's not good. Granted, your fillers will take care of any of that other issue. So, okay. Oh my God, this thing's heavy. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn it around and go to the front. So why don't you go over here. And we'll work on the drawer box now. And then we're gonna put the shelf in and then we're gonna attach the door. So pretty easy stuff here. Grab your locking devices. We're gonna switch back over. We're gonna switch back over. Do not, these little, these little plastic pieces are for uh, extended drawer, uh, drawer fronts and inset applications. We're not using them. They come with the package anyway. So do not email us. I mean, you can't email us, we don't care. But don't email us saying, hey, what are these things for? We have extra parts. It just comes with it. It's just part of it. So it's part of their, their package from KD. All right. So line your drawer fronts or your drawer locking devices. You're going to put them where they are. There's already pre-drilled holes on the bottom side of the front of your drawer box. Okay, you're going to grab some hinge plate or hinge screws. That's these guys right here. You're going to need four total. There we go. And we're going to switch back to our regular Phillips bit. And then we're going to attach into the pre-drilled holes. They go in at a slight angle, so just kind of get it where you need to be. Don't over tighten. This is the one area that you can over tighten. It doesn't do anything really bad, but sometimes these drills are actually too powerful, in my opinion. I think that they're actually a little overpowered for what we're trying to do here. In theory, you could have uh, you know, a regular screwdriver. And I'm gonna, when I get into actually attaching the drawer front to the drawer box, which we can do right now, actually, uh, you're gonna see that having a drill like this is kind of a pain. Just using a hand screwdriver might be the easiest way to do this, but you're gonna do it by, by putting your drawer front face down. You can tell these, these holes right here are used for tip out brackets. So tip out false fronts on like a sink cabinet. These are your mounting screws, mounting holes for mounting the drawer front itself. So you know that this is the bottom side of the drawer, uh, drawer front, okay? So I'm gonna do this. Bottom side is gonna be facing away from me. Front, inside of the drawer box, facing to me. Again, this is a rubber wood drawer box, nice and dovetailed. All smooth, beautifully finished. Very nice. Moving on. Drawer front mounting screws. And that's these guys, these big pan heads. You only need two of them for this guy. You might have a few extra screws here and there, but typically it ends up being pretty good when you're all done. So that's our guy right there. That's what we need. And we're gonna go through, and you, have, you notice that there's actually two different holes, one here and one here. Now, the lower hole is for your upper and mid drawer fronts. So if you're looking at it, this is the bottom of the drawer front. These are going to be for your upper and mid drawer fronts. This is only used, this upper hole is only used for a drawer front that's mounted at the bottom of your cabinet. So when you get to it and you have a three drawer base cabinet, obviously this one's up top. So we're going to use the lower one because that keeps the reveal less, but the bottom one needs more of an overlap. So we have to put the hole a little bit higher. So you have two sets of holes. So we're going to be trying to attach into this guy. So as we look at it, that's the one we're shooting for right there. I'm going to go through, I'm going to insert the screw hole, the screw into the hole, and I am going to try to eyeball it. Now, technically you could probably do this without trying to look through here, but I always found it was easier if I go through here and I can see it. I just tipped it back a little bit and I got the, the head of the screw right in there and I'm going to do a couple of turns by hand. Usually you can get it to sit. Perfect. Here. Again, same thing. I got it into the right hole. This is probably the most tedious part of assembling these cabinets. But once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quick. So again, it goes right there. These holes are enlarged. 
It's a little extra, extra, wide, extra wide for the screw. And the reason we want that is we have a little bit of extra play. If the drawer slides don't have enough adjustment in the locking device, you're gonna be able to take that, loosen these up, not using this guy, just use a hand, you know, screwdriver by hand, and like a Phillips screwdriver, obviously. Loosen these guys up a little bit and you can move the front around just a little bit on the face. It gives you extra adjustment. It's just really nice if you get into a situation where you wanna close up a gap. Okay, so that's it. Locking devices are on the drawer box and we got drawer front mounting screws already attached. Take the thing in, attach. And just make sure it all locks up. Not lock in. Let's see if we get to lock in. Okay, that's not going in for some reason. So this one right here, when I was assembling it, uh, it seems it wouldn't lock into the device. Now it is. You just have to kind of push it in there a few times and we're good to go. All right. When you're doing a raw wood cabinet like this, be sure there is a little bit of oil on those guys. So here, I got a little bit of on the face. So just be careful uh, when you're assembling that stuff. So that's how you do the drawer rocks and drawer front. We're gonna go through here. We got our door. So essentially putting the door on, pretty easy. We're gonna go through here, attach it as you see. The, the holes are already pre-drilled with a little, just a slight uh, drill. It's about a 16th of an inch deep. That went on the wrong screws. But again, we're gonna need four. So two for each hinge. And these are gonna be those, uh, the smallest pieces we have, the, the little screws. There we go. So go through here, don't over tighten. Again, the impact drivers can be a little too powerful, but not bad. Hinges are attached to the door. We're then going to take it, take the, the top one, and we're going to attach. Just clip it right on. That's it. Bottom one goes down here. Again, take it in. Where it needs to be. All right, let's see how our adjustments are. Yeah, pretty good, actually. So we should be about flush at the bottom. This one's going to probably go up just a little bit that way to adjust this. So we're essentially done right now. I'm going to, I'll do some adjustments here in a minute. In fact, let's just do it real quick before I put the shelf in and wrap up this video. So if you feel down here, I'm a little bit high on this side and I'm a little bit low over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that door up. I want it to go up this way. And you can do that because all the hinges have adjustment. Now, if you see here, the first screw that you see here is gonna pull that door in or out. So if you see it, you can do it. That first screw is gonna tilt it that way. And if you do it down here, it can pull it out this way. So you have two different ways of adjusting here. I always like to take a look at the sides. My flush there, my flush here. I'd say that it's a little bit more of a gap up here to the edge of the cabinet and a little bit less of a gap down there. So what I'm gonna do, instead of pulling it this way, I'm gonna take it, this one out this way. And that should pull it out just where I need to. Again, just a little bit too much. Again, make sure your drawer front's right where you need. That's almost perfect for the drawer front. I'm not gonna mess with it. Again, I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna tighten up just a little bit. A hand Phillips is a little bit easier. This thing moves so quickly that you have to be very, very light on the touch. Perfect. It's exactly where I want it to be. We're about flush at the bottom. Nice reveal through here, quarter inch reveal here, so your countertop sits atop here. You got a little bit of room for running silicone bead underneath. Very good. All right, last thing we do is we're gonna insert some of our adjustable shelf pins. Now these pegs are steel. So we just need four of them. Pretty easy. Four pegs, and I'm gonna put it, it doesn't really matter where you put it, they're adjustable. So I'm gonna count down to the fifth uh, hole and I'm gonna put it in there, because that's about, that's about even. And again, you can do with these however you want, but when we assemble these cabinets and you, turn, and you typically install them, it's nice to keep the shelves with your cabinet as you're moving forward. You have an edge banded front edge and you have a non banded back edge. You have a label. I'm going to keep that face down. I'm not even going to remove it. There you go. That's it. Cabinet's done.
you guys enjoyed the video, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to send us a, you know, call or email, and uh, 